Yo, this is Charles Moore from Panama City, Florida. I'm going to be doing my first review on fragrances. Going to be giving you my top 15 fragrances um, in this cologne world uh, that I've came upon. Uh, a little, bit, it's going to be a little different. Um, I just, I just joined a, a fragrance group online on Facebook. Um, my boy John has sent me a link because he knows how much I'm into fragrances, and he's been in this for a while now too. I've been watching a lot of reviews the last couple months on, um, you know, from Mark, from, you know, uh, Dave and his wife, Amanda, from Rob and uh, Cutlass and Gully and just a whole bunch of different people I've been watching, getting their opinions and views on certain scents, some that I have, some that I don't have. This review is going to be a little different because this is going to be a review for people such as myself, which are broke. And can only afford shit between like twenty and fifty dollars. It's pretty much how it is. There's gonna be no niches in this review. None of these, you know, New York fragrances. None of these creeds. These two or three hundred dollar bottles of cologne. Man, I ain't got time for all that. But I do have two honorable mentions that are gonna be out of that price range. That I'm gonna get into. But first, I just want to throw my opinion out there about fragrances. People's noses are different. Everybody knows that. Your body chemistry. Um, Die, all these kind of things have a lot to do with uh, your fragrance that you wear. Um, broke down into seasons, spring, summer, winter, fall, there are colognes that you are supposed to wear in certain climates that project better or don't project as much, not as cloning. But you wear a cologne whenever you want to. Just because I say it's better in the spring or the summertime does not mean you can't wear it when it's snowing outside. I live in Florida. It gets hot. It gets hot as hell. It gets muggy. You know, you don't want anything cloning. You don't want anything heavy uh, when, when it's hot outside like that. You want fresh and spring scents. It's my opinion, but I mean, I think it's also a fact to a certain extent. But at the same time, to contradict myself, you can wear anything whenever you want to. Um, I'm going to be doing these. I'm not going to get into the notes that much. I will make comments about what's in it, uh, what it does, what it doesn't do. I uh, am not going to prolong on certain colognes just because I have I have had requests and just yesterday and today to do certain reviews on colognes that I will do and I will break them down specifically um, as people ask for them. But um, to get into it real quick, my honorable mentions. Uh, first, I have Prada Lunarosa. This was released in 2012. This is to me very different. It's very separate from the other Pradas that are out there. Prada Amber, I love it too. But this one, this one just is very different. Very clean scent. And I think it carries a whole different weight than a lot of the other Pradas do. This bottle was actually $62. I actually have a bigger bottle. I think it's like $84 or $94. You can find it like Ulta, maybe Dillard or something like that. That's my first honorable mention. That is Prada, Prada Lunarosa. My second one. Man. This, this right here. This one, this is Dolce & Gabbana by Man. This was launched in 1994. I actually bought this bottle uh, in 2004. It has since been discontinued and is very, very hard to find. It is, uh, Jesus. If you can smell that, I just want to spray my camera right now. You can't even describe it. It's just amazing. If you own this, keep it. Um, I've seen it on Amazon for $269. I've seen it on eBay for up to 400 bucks, but it's just they don't make it anymore. So if you have this, hold on to it. It is one of the best fragrances I have ever smelled in all my, all, all my fragrance days. And I own about 100 bottles of cologne, but this right here is up there. Uh, it's amazing. All right, I'm going to get into my top 15. Um, like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to go through this very quickly. Um, I'll break off some of the notes and give you my opinions and try to breeze through this real quick. But uh, number 15, starting off, we have Unforgivable, Sean John. This was actually released in 2008. Very, very, very citrusy uh, champagne accord blend. It has a very dry uh, musk run down once the dry down gets there. It's very affordable. You can get it anywhere between $20 and $40. Sean John Unforgivable at number 15. At number 14 from Michael Jordan. This is Michael Jordan Legend. This also is a musk. It was released in 1997. It is a gourmand. Um, it has uh, bergamot in it. Hints of vanilla. Very sweet. It's a very sweet scent. Now if you follow Cologne, Paco Rabanne 1 million. 
This cologne smells nothing like it. The opening notes, completely different colognes. If you know what the Paco Rabanne, the one million smells like, you would know that. But I'm telling you, this dry down to me is where does it sound? It's very similar. It is very similar. Once this cologne settles, very similar to Paco Rabanne, one million. But this is Michael Jordan Legend. Once again, you can find this anywhere between $15, $25 or some of your, your local discount stores like Ross, Marshalls, TJ Maxx. Very good scent. All right. Number 13, I have David Off's Cool Water. No explanation needed. This was released in 1988. Cool Water is just amazing. It speaks for itself. Uh, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this, though. You can buy this shit cheap after Christmas. Now you go to you go to Walmart or, or Target or you know even like CVS and Walgreens when those gift sets after Christmas hit like fifty percent off, David Off Cool Water always wanted to want this up there. A very 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 good scent. That's number thirteen, David Off Cool Water. Number twelve. I will catch some shit for this from the Giorgio Armani House. It is number twelve on my list. Aqua de Jo. Now. This cologne was released in 97, and this is probably, you know, most of the reviews that I see, it's everybody's like number one or number two cent. I do like it. It is not my favorite from this house, though. I'll tell you that. My, the, my favorite from this house is actually coming up next. But this Aqua Digio is a very clean, very fresh scent, and you can't go wrong with it. Ladies love this. Very com It's a good compliment getter, but... If they didn't hand it out to everybody who crossed the state line of Florida, I'd probably wear it more often. But everywhere you go, you smell this. But Giorgio Armani Aqua de Gio, that is good, and that is my number 12. Number 11, from the same house, Giorgio Armani. This is Armani Code. Now, the Armani Code was released in 2004. Very, a lot of apple Lavender, citrus, uh, very good dry down. This cologne, it, it lasts. It's a very good projection, which is a very important to me. Projection and longevity is the most important thing to me when it comes to cologne. Um, you want to be able to spray on something that will last and stay with you that you don't have to keep reapplying. You know what I mean? And, and it's not very cloning. It's very fresh, and it's my favorite from the Armani house. Uh, that's Armani Code at number 11. Number 10... This is from the house of Dolce & Gabbana, Dolce & Gabbana Peron. All right. This was released in 1994. Lots of fruits in here. Uh, lemon, orange, cedar. Top notes are amazing. Uh, longevity, uh, it's not so much. Projection is good. You would might have to reapply this a couple times throughout the day, but um, on my skin, it's normally you know four to six hours. But this is a very good cologne from the house of Dolce & Gabbana. This is Dolce & Gabbana Perron. Number nine from the house of Jean Paul Gaultier. This is Jean Paul Gaultier II. Now this cologne is a musk, uh, oriental, vanilla. It's unisex. Uh, smells amazing. It actually has four magnets right there. When I bought this, it has two bottles on it. Uh, I bought it for like 75 bucks, but you can actually get the single bottle just like this for like 45 bucks. Um, Longevity is good. Projection is good. Uh, from the Gutti from the John Paul Gutierrez House Gutierrez Two. That is my number nine. Number eight from the House of Calvin Klein. This is CK Shock. The CK Shock is a very aromatic, uh, spicy oriental. This cologne right here, the longevity and projection on this is one of the best that I have. It smells amazing. It lasts a very, very, very long time. Um, definitely the best from the Calvin Klein house. Uh, my boy EJ actually put me on this one. I was good looking out, EJ. This was actually launched in 2011. This is nothing like CK1 or CKB or CK Summer surprisingly that it even came from the house of Calvin Klein because a lot of his colognes are very, very similar to me. This one, they should just retire after this because it's not going to get any better than CK Shock. You can actually get a big bottle of this, like a 6.7, for like $35, $45. CK Shock, I recommend this. This is good right here. That is CK Shock at number eight. Number seven from the house of Versace. This is the Versace Dreamer. This is a very aromatic floral scent. I believe it was released in 1996. This cologne right here, if you own this, you'll know what I'm talking about. This cologne will smell a couple different ways on you when you spray it. From the time you spray it, 
when the top and mid notes hit to the bass notes, when it gets to the dry down, this cologne will be very different. But every way that it's different, it smells the same. It's crazy. To, it's hard to even explain it. But this scent will stay on you. And from the Versace house, this has got to be one of my favorites. I have another one that's on this list that is better than this to me. But Versace Dreamer, very good, very affordable. 3.4 ounce bottle you can get for around 40 bucks. That's Versace Dreamer. Number six, I have Loam by Yvonne Saint Laurent. I have two or three bottles from this house of Yvonne Saint Laurent. All their scents to me are very, very sweet scents. Uh, they, they project well. Longevity isn't the greatest. You would have to, might have to reapply this a couple times throughout the day too. But this to me, uh, the Loam. It can it can get expensive up there. It, it does have you can get a smaller bottle for you know forty five bucks, but Yvonne Saint Laurent Loam that is going to be in at number six. At number five, from the house of Versace again. This is Versace Perron. Now this cologne right here has been number one and number two on a lot of reviews that I've seen. My boy Reggie, this is like his number one scent. Um, I actually got this bottle for like $28 at Ross, and I've never seen Versace at Ross before ever. So I was surprised to see that, and I had to get it. You can get a small bottle, $1.0, $1.7, $28, $35. Versace Perron, very clean, very fresh scent. Um, I don't really do the blue jean and all them other ones from Versace. They smell very synthetic to me. But this one right here, Versace Perron, very good. That is Versace Perron at number five. At number four from the house of Chanel, you have Blue Day Chanel. Blue Day Chanel was released, I'm not even sure, but the bergamot, lemon, grapefruit uh, in this is ridiculous. Uh, it's different from anything that Chanel has ever done to me. Now, Chanel has a lot of very good colognes. The Blue Day Chanel is like, almost seems like it'd be from another house. Like, it doesn't even seem like it'd be from the Chanel house. Um, this is my favorite, but this is a very a nice scent. This, this is a cologne that you wear on a date. This is a cologne that you wear... When you're going to be close to somebody. You're not really going to walk into a room and people ask you what you're wearing when you put this on. They'd have to get real close to you. Um, but uh, at number four, Blue Day Chanel, very good scent. At number three, this was released in 2009. This is Armani Duck Black. Very powdery, citrus bergamot. Um, hints of vanilla, kind of cherry vanilla you can smell in there. My boy Justin actually put me on this a long time ago. It's a very underrated scent. A lot of people don't know about it. You can actually get a 3.4 ounce bottle of this for around 40 bucks. But um, definitely, definitely one of the best scents I own too. Mandarina Duck Black. It's a very good cologne. They actually have a Mandarina Duck Blue that I've never smelled before. But if anybody out there has got it, do a review on it because I may purchase that in the future. Number two, from the house of Burberry. This is Burberry Touch. All right. This is a very, very floral scent. It was released in 2000. Very citrusy. There are a lot of notes in this one that we could talk about forever. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if you believe in, like, pheromones and all that shit that, like, you know, triggers the opposite sex and gets people going and do all this kind of stuff. But let me tell you, Burberry Touch, this has it. This cologne does shit to people. It's my fiance's favorite cologne, by the way. But this cologne, it does something to people. If you don't believe in all that, you know, and I, I completely understand, but Burberry Touch, and I own, I own a lot of, a lot of from, from that Burberry house. Uh, Brit, London, the regular, nothing is touching that Burberry Touch at all. That is, the, that is the best cologne from that house. And women love it. Women love it. Now, number one. Cologne for me, best fragrance of all time. Um, was released in 1995. Hints of fresh mint, lavender. Very sweet. Uh, probably, it's my signature scent, man. I mean, of all the colognes I got, this is, this is what represents me. From the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. This is Lamal. Shout out to Earl for this one. This cologne right here is the best that I got in my possession. The longevity lasts forever. Uh, projection is amazing. It stays there. You don't. There's no. Re, you don't have to reapply for this. You know. You. You. Eight hours after you put it on, it's like you just sprayed it 45 minutes ago. Um, garners a lot of compliments. Um, just the best cologne from this house. And this house makes awful cologne. 
I, I don't know what it's called, but there's a Jean-Paul Gaultier. The bottle looks just like this, but it's all white. That shit is awful. It is awful. You wouldn't even think it came from the same house. But I'm telling you right here, this Lamar is the best. And I've seen the reviews. Mark, this is his favorite. This dude's got, he's got 300 bottles of cologne. He's got the niches and the creeds, and all, but this is his favorite. I mean, it, it is just, it's, a, it's an amazing scent. Now, I've read reviews. I've never seen anybody say nothing bad on a review, but I've read reviews that people think it's overrated, and it, it's not for everybody. But to me, it's the best that I own. That's the Jean-Paul Gaultier Lamar. That's my number one. Um, yo, I'm going to do these reviews uh, for the people that I mentioned earlier that asked for specific colognes that I do have that I'll break down. Um, I'm running 16 minutes on this video right now, so I'm going to end it. But Charles Moore, those are my reviews from my top 15. Anywhere between $20 and $50, depending on bottle size. Um, write me back your comments. Anything that you got any questions on, comments, concerns, agree, disagree. I'm open to it all, man. I appreciate you watching. Charles Moore, Panama City, Florida. Peace.